Thank you very much, Bob. And we are so glad to have you and your company here in Kentucky. Our next speaker is Mrs. Danetta Wilder. Did I say that correctly? And she is a success story of um, aerospace in Kentucky and starting a company and growing. And she has been just integral in um, everything that she's done for sealing and sealing life. And I'm happy to introduce her to the stage. You know, I'm gonna have to agree. This is an accident waiting to have to have on here. And if you knew me back in college, I was notorious for falling downstairs. So this is not a good look, so bear with me. So um, my job today is to basically uh, tell you a little bit about me and how I came about our company and basically tell you how I ended up here in Kentucky. And so I'm gonna to try to make this really long story really short. And I can make it as short as saying it was an accident. <laughs> but I'm notorious for quotes and fortune cookies. So before I came up, I sort of Googled a couple of things about accidents. And Mark Twain says, accident is the name of the greatest of all inventions. And right off the back, within 10 seconds, I found the perfect introduction to my group to say, by accident, coming here to Kentucky by way of a lot of different places, I found my true purpose in life. So a little bit about my background. My undergraduate study, um, like Lieutenant Hampton is an engineer, um, my uh, area of expertise was electrical engineering. But I grew up in Detroit. Um, my parents came from a very um, meager background. Uh, so it's not like they were saying, when you grow up, be an engineer. Again, that sort of happened by accident as well. So excelled in school, got through school, moved away from the inner city, um, moved south wanted to find some type of purpose um, in what I wanted to do. And that started off with trying to get in school because I didn't have the money. So I worked, I tried to figure out what I wanted to do. Now, by a show of hands, young people, just throw yourself in that bucket. Who struggled or who struggles with trying to figure out what they want to do in their life? The quick and easy answer to that is just do something. And that's what I did. I worked, I just worked. <laughs> I worked at gas stations, I babysat, I just did any and everything. One thing I did know was that I excelled in with, with school and my mother and father, primarily my mother, always pushed, you know, to go to school, get something, to make sure you don't stay here, <laughs> get something. And so um, my mother really pushed like technology, uh, computers, stuff like that. And so I just took a mad stab at electronics. I started off in a technical program after a couple of years of working and saving some money. And I found myself really enjoying it. Now, even though I was a lot of times the only woman, the only Afro-American, it, <laughs> I don't know, it just didn't phase me. I just kept at it, kept at it. That gave me um, internships in different places that typically you don't get in. Um, companies like General Electric, Siemens Automotive, I don't know if you've heard some of those companies. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Gradually finding that purpose in life until eventually I completed my electrical engineering degree and that took me off to working for Corning Incorporated. Now, this is when it really is going, we're going to accelerate real, real quick. I never dreamed of having the opportunity to work in a job that provided me autonomy, mastery, and a purpose. And those are three of the key things that we're hearing within workforce development that a lot of young people want. Is that true? 
autonomy. You want like a little freedom to be able to make your decisions. You want to learn something, learn something different, and you want to feel like you're contributing in what you do. Do I have it down? Is that a good? I feel the same way, and that's why I truly know that I'm still in my 20s and early 30s. <laughs> because I'm, I was a light years ahead of the people that I was working with. Which when I got out to corporate and started doing certain things, I got the chance to travel overseas a lot, Asia, South Africa, parts of Europe, building, basically integrating robotics and um, IT, that's what I did, system integration. So I did that for a while, my family, we ended up with a couple of nieces and nephews that we had to take care of. And so now, our family life became a little not traditional. And that pushed me into having to make a decision about staying within the corporate realms or starting a business in order for our family to survive, and that's what we did. We started a consulting company that in meeting a lot of other small and medium-sized companies, we developed into a manufacturer where we were able to connect with another small business that was ready to exit out, start our own manufacturing company um, within the realms of polymer technology, which long story short is rubber. So from electrical engineering, system integration, computers to rubber, people ask me all the time, well, why did you make that shift? So from Corning Incorporated, migrated to Kentucky through via Toyota. I mean, who didn't come here through Toyota? Toyota had a huge impact. Quickly, I got introduced to the, to the community and working with these small and medium-sized companies and this rubber technology really stood out because little do you know, there are little to no young people in rubber technology. But I assure you that everybody in here is wearing something that has rubber on it. And rubber is never going to go away. It's a, it, along with the aerospace industry, it's a multi-million dollar um, industry. And we do not have enough young people who are embracing that. Why well, embrace that because it's a niche. Who wants to go into business with something that everybody else is doing, right? I stood out as a young person, yada, yada, yada. So we started this manufacturing company and we had to determine, okay, it's a, it is quite a few rubber companies, how do we stand out as a niche? So what we did was we started looking at industries. And the industry that stuck out from our research within Kentucky was the aerospace industry. So what we did was, because we were fairly new in there, we, did, we asked the question, how do you get yourself noticed when nobody can see you? So the first thing is, is that we looked at certifications. In aerospace, certifications are very important because why things are going up in the air, they're, they're mission critical. So the certification that we found was the, the AS9100. Are you familiar with that? If you're in business, the aerospace, that's the first thing we did. We didn't look for a bunch of customers. We looked at a way at how to validate ourselves that we knew what we were talking about. And so we achieved that in a relatively quick time. Long story short, within a year and a half of having our business, we went from zero dollars to maybe a few thousand short of one million dollars, which is a, a huge feat for someone in a minority status from, from a woman's perspective. It's a very hard um, industry to break. So I started off with this thing about by accident, and truly you can see subway things that I said, I sort of stumbled into what I did. But the main thing goes back to what I was looking for from in the first place. Something that dealt with autonomy, mastery, I love helping people. It didn't matter, really matter what it was doing, I just wanted to feel like I was serving a purpose and helping you, you know? Which I think that's what's really helped us to excel the other areas is basically, I guess, letting you know exactly what our company do. So our, our company, the name of our company is Ceiling Life. I don't even know if I really said that, Ceiling Life Technology. And what we focused on primarily, we started off was, like I said, rubber. So we would just put seals together. And so 
from that, we've grown to precision cutting because the thing about is seals is that, like in the aerospace, they may have a huge shuttle area that may be the, you know, it's a conference of this room or larger or, the, or some type of satellite, something going up in the air, and they have to keep elements in and out. We specialize in the technology of sealing and shielding. So we work with EMI, RFI technology. We have state-of-the-art, quarter million dollar cutting, dialless, dye type technology that utilizes a lot of IT, software, CAD skills that can cut things as thin as, you know, micro-thin films, and then work with in the molding process to put some type of specially chem, um, um, compound material together to keep certain frequencies out. So the benefits of being here in Kentucky, getting this business up and going, I think the biggest thing, the benefit is the demographics of where Kentucky is located, especially in Lexington. We're right on the corridor to like I-75, 64. So um, I was always taught in graduate studies like when you do like case studies on different companies, it's like, well, what is UPS doing? What is Toyota doing? So another thing that made me want to stay here was I saw UPS move here. I was like, well, it's got to be a reason why UPS came here. Well, that means that we're located in a central place that can touch a lot of other states, which we, we do, we are. So that's one of the benefits of our, what our company see as a small business in this area. Another area is, I think it was uh, Mr. Young. I don't know if he's still here. He said that, that Kentucky does things with a vengeance. And that is so true. As a uh, transplant into the area, one of the things I think in, in all the places that I've lived, this has probably felt the most like home. Um, for two reasons. When you finally get in, there's this humongous sense of belonging that's created amongst the people that they work. Everybody wants to help help you and it's a, it's a nice feeling. The other piece is the competitiveness, that vengeance piece, that if you're smart and you're a hard worker and you want to win, then generally they want you on your team. Um, what else? Large pool of resources. As you can see, there's a, a huge aerospace community here. So that's right for the picking, and that means there's a lot of money to be made. All right, hear that, young people? So some of the barriers that I faced. Um, I think even now, I mean, the hardest thing within this industry is exposure. These type of opportunities here allow us to get past those exposure barriers. So um, I guess go, go, uh, elaborating on that is you know, breaking into the in crowd because you can identify where the people are, but creating the relationships that you need for people to basically let their guard down, do business with you, because they can see, see that working with you is going to be a good thing. So I guess I'm going to bring closure to, to what I have to say by basically um, leaving the young people, put yourself in that group if you like, <laughs> um, with a couple of uh, mantras that I've sort of lived by in order to, through the best of times and the worst of times, get where I'm getting, because I'm, I'm truly not where I really want to be. Hint, hint. <laughs> so, Never judge a book by its cover. You know, I think that has to do a lot with, even in business, look, not just looking at a person, summing them up as something. Give them an opportunity to build that trust with you. Um, simplicity. And everything I do, even if it's a complex um, problem, I try to really break it down and bring simplicity to it so that everyone, all of us, are communicating on the same level. Um, find something that you love to do. Like I said, I uh, love to help people. So you could put me in medicine, you could put me in horticulture, whatever. If I can identify 
my process and how it helps you, I'm probably going to be happy with it. Um, integrity. I probably should have said this first. It's just not something, it's everything. For me, in our business, the, way, the reason why we've done very well, we have like a 99.9 .9 quality rating amongst our customers because quality, to me, ties directly to integrity, and that's what we do. Um, sharing, learning how to share. There's <laughs> a lot of money out here, you know, and it's enough for all of us to share, and I utilize that when we're partnering with companies to uh, keep down the confusion and work well as a team because again i'm drawn to that sense of belonging that competitive spirit that promotes autonomy learning mastery and true purpose in what i do thank you